Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Factorio Friday Facts, number 428. Uh, I'm Exterminator, and thank you so much for joining me today. And we are looking at reactor and logistic circuit control. Uh, now, ironically, I said in my last video, and uh, just in general, that after the uh, beta testing LAN party, that like these Friday Facts, I would have seen the stuff and would just be able to kind of add on to what they said rather than like speculation and like being surprised. Ironically, what's shown in this Friday Facts is actually stuff that I not only didn't use, but I didn't even know was a thing. Uh, because, like, like, and this shows how much content there is uh, in the expansion, is while I was at the uh, LAN event, I never actually personally had a chance to mess with any of this stuff. So this is actually new to me, which is awesome. Um, that this is, this is really good stuff, so let's just get right into it here. Uh, so reactor circuit connection to begin with. Uh, pretty straightforward, they added the ability to read temperature and fuel amount in a reactor, including currently burning too, which is pretty important. Um, so you can do a lot of different stuff with this. Previously, if you wanted to kind of control, you know, smart, smart control your reactors, you would need to like put the steam into tanks and then read the tank level, or the steam in the tank level rather, and uh, it, was, it was like, kind of cumbersome in my opinion, but it did require some, you know, thinking and stuff, which Clonin does go into saying that, you know, maybe makes it a little too easy now to not have to do that. Personally, I'm fine with it. I thought it was always kind of ridiculous that you did have to do that. And it made these setups like just, there was just more to it that I, than I really thought it needed to be. Uh, but yeah, you can now read temperature and fuel amount. This makes it quite easy, quite easy to set up a lossless smart reactor, which doesn't insert any fuel unless it's needed. Right, so very simple. You just say if temperature is less than A sixty six, output a or sorry. <laughs> um, the, the way they change the circuit network is say, taking a little bit to to understand it here. So basically, they're saying if temperature is less than eight fifty, or or and fuel is equal to zero. This is just showing the current amount. So currently, the temperature is A sixty six, and then you know, fuel does equal zero though, so that condition's met, and then they would output the thing to insert fuel. In some ways, it feels a little bit too easy. The previous solution of people reading the amount of steam in storage tanks felt like it needed a bit more brain power and engineering, but it's hard to justify missing capabilities with this reasoning. And I'm really glad they decided to go this route in this thought process. Like, I mean, obviously things can become too easy and boring. I don't think this is one of them. Like, uh, power and nuclear power specifically is, I don't want to say like niche enough because it is pretty commonly used, but having to set up like steam for it to read it and create a smart fuel thing is not really something I would consider like game ruining if it's too easy to do. You know, it's not like, it's not like making like the science packs all require one ingredient or something, right? It's not like a fundamental thing to the every single game you play all the time. Um, so I, I'm not really concerned with it, but it is a very nice thing to now be able to do this directly. Next we go on to Roport circuit improvements. Uh, with the ability to set assembler recipes, there was one missing piece of the puzzle related to making a fully automated magical craft everything circuit setup. This was the ability to read what items are missing from the logistic network, so we added that. So basically request your chest, uh, you can hook this up and then you can read, excuse me, sorry, <laughs> I, I drank water and keep uh, almost hicc hiccuping here. Um, you can you can now read uh, what items are missing from the log logistic network. So it outputs the amount of items needed to satisfy all logistic requests in the system, including mobile entry entities like the player and spiders. Importantly, or unfortunately, it does not include items needed to build ghosts, construction requests. This is mostly a technical restraint on our behalf as logistic networks do not track ghosts in a way that we would make it uh, perform it to include. Um, so that is a bit unfortunate because I could see this being used uh, like very heavily for, uh, you know, blueprints and ghost building, but at least at least we are getting this much of it. Additionally, we added the ability to read the number of RoboPorts in the network. This can be used, for example, to automatically top up the number of robots as you expand your logistic network. So that's kind of cool too, right? You could like read it and say, you know, like do do something where like if RoboPorts increase by X amount, add this many robots and such. 
and I think it it's like a little niche maybe, but I think there could be some good cases for this, but just generally this whole feature of RoboPort circuit improvements uh, of being able to read, uh, you know, missing items missing from a logistic network is really good. And then additionally, we have the ability to read the number of RoboPort. Uh, so yeah, sorry, I already read that. Um, and then logistic chest enable disable, which I think is actually my preferred thing over this one. For, for my use cases is it can be a little bit hard using the logistic network to prioritize things uh, kind of like only bring advanced circuits here if we have enough uh, so we added a way to disable them using the circuit network and it's very straightforward it's just an on off toggle but having this ability is super nice I can think of multiple cases in the past where I would have liked to have been able to turn off uh, mostly request for chess, although provider chess too, I think could be good. Uh, you know, if you want to maybe like save the items for something or, or like a uh, clone assist here, like have a thing, you know, basically only turn on if you have like the amount you want stored in it, you know, you can obviously stop an inserter from inserting in it based on it as a con condition. But until now you couldn't actually stop the chest from being pulled from. But now if you wire like provider chess and you're like, Okay, we'll turn this chest off unless the item in it is more than 200. Then that means that, you know, you're going to always have 200 in there because it won't even be on if it's, you know, less than 200. So I, I really, really like this. I can think of quite a few cool, cool ways we, we can use this. And then we go on to say this is uh, for all types of logistic chests and works the way you'd expect. Disabling requesters obviously stops them from requesting. And then providers is basically what I just said. Uh, it is common with these circuit network features that the community ends up doing crazy things we can never think of, so it'll be interesting to see what will be possible. I can definitely see some even crazier, uh, like one assembler, w like one requester provider type something for like a base. You know how we had, um, shoot, I, for I forget who it was, I apologize. We had those like smallest bases, like the like 32 by 32 or something or 32 by 16 like base that could launch a rocket or something um you know current like in the past i imagine something even crazier than that in 2.0 with all of these uh circuit and logistic things we can control now and i think I'm, I'm really excited for it i'm not going to be one doing it because uh if you know me i cannot do circuits to save my life uh, beyond the simplest things this i could do uh, but I, I definitely think there's going to be some pretty crazy stuff. And then lastly, the LAN party result. We finished up our five-day LAN party on Monday this week. We'd like to thank everyone who came. It was really great timing. The amount of feedback from all the players were was amazing. And, uh, you know, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I also want to thank the devs for inviting not only myself, but everyone in hosting the event and, you know, just providing the space and the computers. And it was it was amazing and I'm really glad they got good feedback from it because I think everyone had an absolute blast, myself included, obviously. And uh, they had, well, a lot of feedback. During the event, they had nearly 900 individual feedback reports. Uh, we were told like 700 plus, but I think they hadn't added them all up from the last day at that point. So 900 is crazy. Now, 41 Panics is not 900 bugs. This is because we, we could submit, we had an option in game to submit a, a feedback with a form and you had options like bug uh general suggestion and then something else but i i imagine quite a lot of these were just like general like kind of oddities people noticed or suggestions i know a lot of them were probably like at least half of mine were suggestions and the people i played with so i wouldn't worry that there, there were not 900 bugs um there were not really that many bugs there were some for sure uh, but like most of them just got patched like the day of, and then any that, you know, maybe didn't get patched, I am very confident they will patch by release in a month or more than a month. So I wouldn't really worry about that. Uh, Katka has spent her time during the event sorting through reports as they came in and raising the biggest bugs in AG's boss kid. Uh, this is not to mention all the ideas and suggestions we had from talking with everyone. And again, I've mentioned this in the two, in the two videos I kind of made about the event, the last Friday facts and the specific video a couple of days ago is, you know, the devs were fantastic about like coming around and just generally talking to people or like they got a suggestion coming around and like talking with the person who suggested it and like, you know, working through ideas for the suggestion if it could or could not be implemented. And uh, I suspect and I, I hope that definitely some of the stuff that 
we as players suggested does make it in the game. I, I really think some of it will. Um, you know, there was some stuff where the devs were like, oh yeah, that's like super easy, you know, if it, you know, if it's not in 2.0 release, we'll maybe do it afterwards or something. Um, so I'm pretty confident in that. And then some of the teams finished in the 50 hours we played, so we are feeling okay with the overall pacing progression. Uh, there were a few areas that we will have to focus on for Space Age release, but overall the game seems stable and fun enough, so there's no way on keeping the release of October 21st, which I think people may have been worried about too, um, but it's nice to hear. And I mean, they said this at the event, that Cobrex even said, like, yeah, we're sticking with the date. We're, we, we cannot move it at this point. And then, you know, this kind of further solidifies that, that it is coming out October 21st. There's not going to be delays um, or push pushbacks, you know, pushing back the date or anything. It's going to be good to go. And... And uh, yeah, I do want to mention in terms of the 50 hours, people finishing, um, you know, keeping uh, keeping a few things in mind, like definitely the speed run is finished. There's no surprise there. That's not really, I would not use that as a metric for like how long it may take you to beat the game unless you are a speed runner. Um, also, it was multiplayer, right? So this is a team of 10 speed runners, <laughs> like, um, and then also, you know, all the people here were... You know, we've played the game for thousands and thousands of hours and many years. So, yeah, I, I mentioned this because I had multiple people in my last video ask, like, based on your playtime extern, like, how long do you think it will take to finish the expansion? And I think you can kind of use this as a judge. Now, obviously, I would say most teams do not play for 50 straight hours, like, for 50 hours, actually. Like, you know, there were lunch breaks, there were bathroom breaks, there was talking... Um, but I would say, like, if you reduce this down to about 40 hours, 45 hours, maybe. Um, but again, keep in mind, this is a team of, like, 8 to 10 people who have played this game for thousands of hours, um, and know it inside and out. So, if you're, like, just a normal player, you know, maybe you have, like, a hundred, couple hundred hours or something, you picked it up, like, a few months ago, uh, or something, then I would say probably the expansion should give you at least... 50, 60, 80 hours more gameplay on top of it. Like, like that's after, well, th this 50 hours is including from start to finish, right? But I would say for, for like more, uh, like, uh, less, uh, hardcore players that it could definitely be 50 hours after launching the rocket, not just 50 hours from like placing your first burner miner, but 50 hours after the rocket. Uh, but again, everyone's going to be different like you know it depends on your solo multiplayer but i just want to mention that since people asked last time i will just say there's a ton of content there is still so like a lot i mean obviously i didn't even know this stuff was a feature was a an addition to it because i just didn't get a chance to mess with this stuff specifically myself uh but then on top of this the stuff i did play with there's a lot more they've not shown in friday facts and there's just a massive amount of content here uh in, in the expansion but i'm gonna end it here before i rant too much and uh that is going to do it, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed and are getting uh, as excited as I am. I am still so excited um, for release just because I can make content and, you know, excited for the embargo lift date for media so I can release content and stuff. Um, but as always, thank you so much. Leave your thoughts down below. I enjoy reading them as always and, you know, we'll answer anything I can. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.